I'm David Tracy with Jalopnik. I'm at a junkyard near Detroit on a quest to grab the coolest car parts I can find, take them back to my workbench, and show you how they work. Let's see what I can find. All right, so today at the junkyard, we're looking for disc brakes. They're everywhere, but we're gonna find a car that we can easily remove the brake system from. Well, it ain't gonna get any easier than this one. Jeep Wrangler, basically built on 1940s technology. A couple of bolts and the booster's off. All I have to do is take off the caliper and boom, it's off. So we're just gonna pull the brakes off of this old Wrangler. Yes. Brake master cylinder. Yes. Brake booster, be free. Uh, all right, we're still hooked to the pedal, so we're gonna have to unhook the, the little pedal. So let's do that. Oh, money in the bank. All right, so just disconnected the brake pedal. Now that little plunger is ready to come out. Look at that. Now we just need to take off the caliper and the rotor. Oh, these meaty brake pads. All right, there's our brake caliper. Just slides right off. And now we're ready to go back to my workbench and have a closer look. All right, so now that we've got those brake parts back from the junkyard and on my workbench, we're gonna dig into how it all works. So it all begins with your brake pedal. Your foot pushes on a very long lever and it hinges about this axis right here. Now, ultimately what you wanna do is you wanna push this rod in and that rod you can see the hole there connects to your brake pedal right here you create a torque when you push on this brake pedal and that torque the value of that torque is the force that you apply times this lever arm you're able to push on that rod via this mechanical advantage of having a longer lever arm this is called a brake booster. And the vacuum from your engine, whenever the piston goes down to suck in air, the vacuum will actually help suck this in. It'll help you push your brake pedal. And ultimately, what the output there is, as you can see, as I push that rod in, the output is that this rod gets pushed. Here's how this brake booster works. So this is power brakes. This is a vacuum line from your, from your engine's intake manifold. So it's a negative pressure created by your pistons going down to suck in air. That creates a vacuum inside this chamber. Now, what that does is it helps you push this rod in by sucking this plate forward like, like that. Now, when you push your brake pedal, you're trying to push this rod, and the brake vacuum creates suction that assists you, and ultimately pushes this push rod, which is what goes into your brake master cylinder. So, now there's also a spring in here, that pushes your pedal back, so when you let off your pedal, it'll, it'll go back. But that's, that's it. That's how, that's how power brakes work. So at this point, we start to look at fluid hydraulics. So the force is no longer mechanical going through metal linkages, but it, the force gets transferred to brake fluid. So that little rod coming out of the brake booster is going to push against this piston right here. And you can see that move in and out. What that piston will do is it will push brake fluid through metal brake lines. You've got two reservoirs here, it's split. Why do you have two brake fluid reservoirs? Well, one goes to the front wheels and one goes to the back. If you have a leak in your brake line, in your front brake line, you still have your rear brakes. If you have a leak in your rear brakes, you still have your front brakes, so it's a safety thing. This is a valve block in charge of distributing your fluid. And then this little yellow guy here, that's your brake switch. So when you press your brake pedal, 
this little sensor will notice the pressure and it will send signals to your brake lines. So you put your foot down, you've now got high pressure in these brake lines. But your hard lines can't take the brake fluid all the way to the caliper because your caliper is connected to your knuckle, which is what your wheel's connected to. So that wheel moves up and down and side to side. The first bump you'd hit, you'd break the, the hard line right off. So, rubber brake hoses. Now the rubber brake hoses connects to the hard line on the body. So this would be connected to the body and the rubber hard line would thread in there. And then this would go onto the caliper. Would thread right onto this, into this little banjo bolt. So that would allow your wheel to move up and down. Now we've got fluid coming from your rubber brake line into this piston right here. So this is a single piston caliper. This is a larger piston. You can see that is significantly bigger than that little guy. And that is done because your foot can't put a thousand pounds of clamping force to stop your rotor. So when you've got a closed system, the pressure throughout the system is constant. So your foot is on the brake, you have sent a pressure wave through your brake system and it almost immediately comes to an equilibrium. That pressure pushes this large piston. Now remember, the pressure here pushing on this piston is the same as the pressure that you have exerted on your small piston. So, how does that become a mechanical advantage? Well, pressure is equal to force over area. So this has a small area. So we've got the same pressure in both. This has a small area. This has a large area. So what that means is that the force that you input here over a small area, in order to create the same pressure here over a large area, you end up with a larger force. So these slide pins allow this entire caliper to move back and forth. The whole point is to allow for these things to both make contact with your rotor. All right, so let me take these brake pads off so we can have a closer look at the brake piston. So there's one on the outside of the caliper and then there's one that goes straight into the center of the caliper. This is your piston. There's a seal here to keep the fluid inside. And this piston is made out of metal or uh, this plastic type material called phenolic. I'm gonna try to bang this little piston out. Something moved. Hey, look. The piston itself is coming out. There it is. So, we still got a considerable amount of brake fluid in there, but really, all this is, is a cylinder. Just like a cylinder of an engine with a hole in the back for fluid to enter. And then you've got a big old piston and the fluid pushes on the back of this piston and the, push, the piston pushes on a brake pad. This rotor has five studs that go through it and that's what your wheel bolts onto. So if you stop this rotor, you stop your wheel and you stop your car. So that's an overview of how it all works. You put your foot on the brake pedal. The linkage gives you a mechanical advantage. You get brake vacuum from your engine then, because of the difference between the size of the master cylinder piston and your larger brake piston, you get an even larger advantage, ultimately resulting in lots of clamping force, slowing this rotor down, slowing your car down, and ultimately bringing you to a halt. So that is how a brake system works. Let's see what the junkyard has in store for us next time. Don't let me down. We're doing speed wrenching. It's like speed dating, except not at all. It's not very exciting, it's just a bore. <laughs>